In this tutorial, we'll take a look at arithmetic sequences. And we're going to start with an example where we can consider the sequence 5, 8, 11, 14. And the, this, is, this symbolism means the first term, second, the subscript is a term number, so this means term 3 or T3, term 4. And notice that I could think of this, and I'll call it the first term is 5, of course. The difference between 5 and 8, again, is the 3. It's going up by 3. So the second term, the 8, could be written as 5 plus, I've added to it, 1, 3. The 11, the third term, would be, the could you could think of it as 5 plus, I've added two 3s. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 add 5 is 11. The next one, I've added an additional 3. So I have the first term plus 3 3s. Uh, 3 3s is 9, plus 5 is 14. So the general term, or the term formula for the sequence is, and we could write it as the first term plus, now notice that the number of threes you're adding is always one less than the term number. I've added one three to get the second term. I've added two threes to get the third term. The number of threes I've added is always one less than the term number. So that's why for the nth term, you've added n minus one, one less than n number of threes. Now, in, in general for arithmetic sequences, and, we're, and the um, symbol that's often used to represent the first term is A, and D is the common difference, so in the, in the case up here, D was 3. So the first term is A, I've added a common difference to get the second term, so the second term is A plus D. I've added another common difference for the third term, so the third term it could be called A plus 2D. I've added another common difference for the next one, so then the fourth term would be A plus 3D. And so the uh, general term for any arithmetic sequence can be written as the nth term is A, the first term, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And again, the number of common differences you're adding is always 1 less than the term number. If we go back to this sequence example up here, um, it's always 1 less than, or here's another reason why it's always 1 less than, is because the first term doesn't have any common differences added to it. We're just saying the first term is 5. That's where the sequence starts. And then we start adding 3's to the next term, the next term, the next term after that. So that's the general term for ar ar any arithmetic sequence, and we're going to use that in this example and the ones in the next couple of pages. So in this example, we're given the sequence, two, sequence 2, 10, 18, 26, and asked to find a formula or a, the general term for this particular sequence. So the first term is 2, so A would be 2, and from 2 to 10, the difference is 8, so the common difference would be 8. And so we write out our general term for any arithmetic sequence, and we're basically going to tailor that formula for this specific one. So we're going to fill in the 2 in place of A and the 8 in place of D, and we'll simplify this. So I would, I would distribute the 8 in here. 8 times n is 8n, and 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. And so we collect like terms. Uh, there's only one n term, so it's 8n. But 2 take away 8 is negative uh, 6. So the general term for this specific sequence is uh, the nth term is 8n minus 6, or you could write as negative 6 plus 8n. That's the same thing. And you can use that to find any term. So in B it says use the formula to find the 81st term. So we would 80 for 81 is the n number. So we're finding term 81. So we would fill in 81 here and here. So term 81 would be 8 times 81 minus 6. Uh, 8 times 81 is 648. Take away 6, so the 81st term is 642. Notice in the particular sequence, the difference is 8. And so notice that the coefficient of n is 8. That's not a coincidence. Um, if it's going up by 8, then it should be 8n. In example 2 on the second page, the general term for a sequence is given by the nth term is 20 minus 6n. And we're asked to write the first four terms of the sequence. So we would start by writing out our formula and putting 1 in place of n for the first term. So 20 minus 6 would be, and we'll call this a because it's the first term, would be 14. So the first term is 14, or you could write it as term 1 is 14. For the second one, we'll put 2 in place of n. So 20 minus, this would be 12, is 8. So the second term is 8. And then we'll put 3 for the third term. So 20 minus 6 times 3, that's 18. Subtracted from 20 would be 2. So the third term is 2. And then for the fourth term, we'll put 4 in place of n. So 20 minus 6 times 4, 20 minus 24 is negative 4. So that's the fourth term. 
So the first four terms of the sequence are 14, 8, 2, and negative 4. And B asks what I was talking about right at the end of the, the first page. What's the significance of the negative 6 in the formula? Uh, the negative 6 specifically by the n. Notice the terms going down by 6, so the negative 6 is the common difference. It's how much uh, the term is changing from one term to the next. Uh, last example, uh, we're told that the eighth term of a sequence is negative 16, and the 15th term is negative 44, and we're asked to find the 200th term. Now, in order to find the 200th term, we really need to find the a and d value, and then what the general term is, and then we can find the 200th term. Now, I'm going to give you two ways to do this. One way is you could, uh, so that's the 8th term, and that's the 15th term. So you could find the difference between negative 44 and negative 16. Okay, so I'm subtracting the two terms, the difference between negative 44 and 16. And so uh, notice that this would actually be subtracting negative 16. That's what it ends up adding, plus, you know, plus 16. And that difference is negative 28. Now, from 15 to 8, that's seven terms in between there. And so there's been seven common differences from 8 to term 8 to term 15. So one way to get to what the common difference is, is we could divide that by 7. And so the common difference would be negative 4. I'm going to show you a different way to do that at, after I finish this part. So now that we have the, uh, the difference is negative 4, we need to find what a is, the first term. And so we could just use the general term formula and use one of these terms, either the 8th term is negative 16 or the 15th term is negative 44. It really doesn't matter which, you could use either. So the 8th term would be a plus, and it, uh, n would be 8, because it's the 8th term, so uh, 8 minus 1 would be a 7 here, times negative 4. So the 8th term is negative 16, so it would be a plus, this would be 7 times negative 4, which is negative 28. So to solve this for a, we'd be adding, uh, bring the negative 28 over here, be positive 28, subtract 16, and so uh, a works out to be 12. So now that we know that a is 12 and d is negative 4, we could find the 200th term. So the nth term is the first term, the 12, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. I'm just using the general term formula for an arithmetic sequence. And so let's simplify this, and then we'll find the 200th term. So I multiply the negative 4 in here, be minus 4n and then plus 4, and uh, 12 and 4 add to 16. So the nth term, or the general term, is 16 minus 4n. So to find term 200, we put 200 in place of n. So basically, 16 minus 800 will give you negative 784 for the 200th term. So that's the 200th term. Now, another way to do this, another way as opposed to this to find a and d, is we could use the general term formula for an arithmetic sequence. And the negative 16 is the eighth term. So that's a term, not a term number. That's a term. So we could put negative 16 here equals a plus, And it's the eighth term. So if we put 8 in here, 8 minus 1 would be 7. So negative 16 is a plus 7d. And then we could put negative 44 in place of term n, the nth term. And that's the 15th term. So if we put 15 in place of n here, 15 minus 1 is 14. And basically, using those two terms and substituting them into the term formula, we have a system of equations we could solve by elimination or substitution, because we have two equations and two unknowns. And so the a's are, have the same coefficient. They're both 1a. So we could subtract these to, to then eliminate the a and solve for d. I'm using elimination here. Negative 16 minus negative 44 is 28. 7d minus 14d is negative 7d. This looks kind of familiar to what we did over here. To uh, solve for d, I would divide 28 by negative 7 and get negative 4. Same thing I got over here on the left. And so, and then to find what a is, we could substitute negative 4, 4 here or here. I'm going to use this one, which is actually the same thing I really did over here. And so a plus 7 times negative 4 would equal to negative 16. Um, this is negative 28, so we'll add 28 to this side to get a, and so a works out to be 12 again. So just a little bit different way to do that. Now the last part asks, what's the recursive formula for the sequence? Well, um, 
The common difference is negative 4. So that means the term is going down by 4 each time. Now it might, to answer that last question, it might help to uh, write out what the first few terms of the sequence are. Remember, it starts at 12. And uh, the common difference is negative 4. So it goes 12 to 8 to 4 to 0 to negative 4. We're subtracting 4 each time. And so the, in order, the recursive formula for the sequence would be the nth term is the term before it minus 4. So that's how we could write a recursive formula for a particular sequence. Any term is equal to the term preceding it minus 4. And that's the end of the video.